Hi guys, Mel the Train Tutor here with another Back to Basics video. In this Back to Basics video, we're going to be looking at polystyrene. Now, polystyrene is used in the majority of war games, hills, and large structures. Yeah, uh, you can use it at home, obviously make your own. A lot of the manufactured pieces are used using a form of polystyrene. But first, let's just talk through polystyrene in general. Now, polystyrene is actually a clear resin, and it was found in the early 1800s by a German fellow, and I just can't remember his name to save my life. Yeah, but it's used for a phenomenal amount of things. So let's just have a look at what it's used for. So, for example, this plastic fork, yeah? made out of polystyrene. This is general purpose polystyrene. Okay. This CD case. Yeah. This is made out of high impact polystyrene. Yeah. But let's be honest, this isn't what you've come to see. You're interested in the foam for scenery. Yeah. So this here is polystyrene foam. And it literally is the resin blown into a cast with air. Yeah, and it comes out like this. And they make sheets of it four by two for insulation because it's brilliant for when they're building houses for insulating them. And as you can see, yeah, it's really dense. I mean, really is dense. Yeah, it's really strong and you do need the proper tools to cut it. I mean, I'm putting quite a bit of force in that and it's not snapping. Okay, and this is polystyrene foam. Yeah, now you're probably more used to, yeah, expanded polystyrene. Yeah, and that's the white stuff, okay? This is the far more common stuff that you used to. This is the stuff that they make packaging out of. I mean, it's also available for insulation through your builders, merchants, and you get two by four sheets. You'll get about four of those sheets for about six or seven pounds. It's not expensive at all, yeah? Now, the difference between this and this is that this is actually made from preformed polystyrene balls. And if you look really closely, and I'm not sure if you can, yeah, yeah, you'll see it's made of lots of little balls. And what happens is they inject the balls into a mold, yeah, they heat it up and it flattens off, yeah. Now it's not just used to make this. Like I said, it's made to use packaging. Yeah, you've all seen it. You've all unwrapped something electrical and, Found, you know, had the end pieces and put them up or thrown them away or thought I could turn them upside down and make a building out of them. Yeah, but you can also get things like these. Yeah, now these are polystyrene shapes. Yeah, they're formed from expanded polystyrene. And if you have a good look, yeah, this one's quite large. It's a relatively cheap. And I got these out of what you call it, an Easter egg building kit that cost me a pound. And I got about six or seven foot out of them so it's a good buy yeah this one was bought from a craft shop yeah it's made of very small polystyrene balls yeah so it's a very smooth and it's going to knock you back about one pound fifty and the reason for the expense is they know you're not going to be insulating your house with this sort of stuff this sort of stuff is used for crafts and hence the expense but if you're building like a radar station or something futuristic yeah then it's perfect for it it cost me one pound fifty brilliant buy now you can get them in all sorts of shapes you can get squares pyramids all sorts so really have a look before you start building something have a look what you can get as your base yeah because sometimes you can save yourself a load of hassle and just buy a preformed block yeah now before we go into polystyrene too much what i'd like to do is just quickly cover yeah some safety points first things first when you file it when you sand this stuff and when you work with it yeah especially sanding it gives off lots of dust and fibers, yeah? And that stuff is not good for your lungs. So wear a dust mask, yeah? Like anything, you've only got one set of lungs and they're supposed to last your lifetime. So, you know, look after yourself, look after them. Wear a dust mask if you're doing lots of sanding with this sort of stuff. A little bit you're gonna get away with, yeah? But always side on the air on caution. So, you know, if you're gonna be doing sanding, and sanding anything, fiberboard or anything war games, yeah? Resin, anything. Wear a dust mask, protect your lungs. The other thing is, yeah, we use a heat a lot with, with this sort of stuff. And what we do is we use it to cut it, shape it, smooth it. Yeah, and when we do, it gives off toxic fumes. So it's always important that if you're gonna be using hot tools with this heat, make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. Have the windows open and not just one, have two, get a draft through to clear the fumes. Otherwise, you're still gonna start going cross-eyed and a little bit giggly and it isn't good for your brain. 
Okay, so there's the safety points. Now before we get, what I'm gonna do now is we'll move on to actually working with this sort of stuff. So give me a minute, I'll come back in just a flash and we'll start showing you what we can do with it. See you in a second. Right guys, I'm back with two pieces of polystyrene. We've got the polystyrene foam, the pink stuff. You can also get it in blue, but it's mainly pink. And we've got the white expanded polystyrene. And what I'm gonna do now is just take you through a few tools. Now, I'm sorry I'm looking directly at this and you can't see my face, but you're more interested in this than my ugly mug, to be perfectly honest. So first things first, yeah, a quick comparison. As I've said, this stuff is really dense. Yeah, it's gonna take a lot more effort cutting than this stuff. Now, the first way you can shape it yeah, is simply breaking it in bits, yeah? And if you look, with expanded polystyrene, you can literally just get your thumbs in and break it. Yeah, just like that, and it comes off in bits, yeah? And you can shape hills doing it like that if you've got no tools, yeah? And it works okay to be, you know, I've had, given it a couple of goes and the results are okay-ish. Now this sort of stuff, the polystyrene foam, you can't break, I mean, this stuff is just too, Damn dead, there you are. Okay, I did break it, but with a hell of a lot of effort. Yeah, it does break smoother, because obviously this is made into balls, and so it fractures along the ball line, so to speak, where the balls meet. Yeah, whether this is a lot smoother, yeah? Now that's the most fundamental way of, of shaping polystyrene, but, you know, let's be honest, you're gonna wanna use tools, you're not gonna be one of breaking little bits off it to get the shape you want, yeah? So, the first tool we're gonna look at is a knife. Yeah, this is a steak knife. And to be truthful, any knife with a serrated edge, yeah, will work wonders on this sort of stuff. So let's have a look at the expanded polystyrene foam first. Yeah, and you can literally, yeah, cut straight through it. Yeah, it's a relatively clean cut. Okay, i.e. it's gone through the balls in the mainstay. Yeah, if you go over to watch for it to the polystyrene foam, yeah, this stuff is a lot tougher, but you can still cut through it with a select serrated blade and it gives a much smoother finish. Yeah, if you compare those two finishes. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see that, but yeah, much smoother finish because it's basically a high density. Yeah, it isn't made up of lots of little balls, which this is. I mean, you can see if I break it up, you can start to see the balls fall in. And a little thing, yeah, this stuff is attracted to static, so it will stick to everything. Make sure before your wife comes back or your mum comes back, yeah, you clean it up, otherwise she's going to go ape. Yeah. Now, another quick word of warning. This stuff is really dense. In preparation for doing this tutorial, yeah, I lost my favourite carving knife, yeah, and got a wound in the process. Yeah, so be careful working with knives and this stuff, yeah. The knife may fail before the foam does, so yeah, just be really careful. So that's cutting it with knives, and as you've seen, yeah, it's an absolute doddle. Yeah, you can shape it. Yeah, you can cut these into it. Yeah, and you can do all sorts of things with it. And that, this stuff's really good for shaping, what you call it, mountains with knives, because you can really carve it, and you can do some intric intricate details with it, with it being so dense. Yeah, now, obviously, steak knives have the limitation. Yeah, same on this side. Yeah, you can do such interesting stuff with it. You can carve into it. But once again, always remember, you're going to end up with a rougher cut when you're using expanded, because it's made up of these polystyrene balls. Now the other thing you can use to cut this stuff, yeah, coping saw. Yeah, uh, coping saw is basically a long blade with a large ring round it. So what you can basically do, you can get in and you can just cut through it like that. Whee, look at the mess off that. I'm gonna have to clean this up or my wife is gonna crucify me. But, yeah, relatively rough cut, but you can use it to shape it. And remember, we can always clean this up afterwards, yeah? So don't discount using simple tools to work with polystyrene. Yeah, you don't need brilliant tools to shape hills and mountains. Yeah, showing you the coping saw on the pink stuff. Yeah, cuts it just as well. Yeah, uh, because it's a serrated saw and the serrated edges are quite... Well, they're a lot more defined than the steak knives. These are far more finer edges, yeah? We've ended up with a much rougher cut. Yeah, if you can see that, 
Yeah, lots of bobbles, whereas compared to if I did it with a steak knife, so what I'll do is I'll just cut the top of this off. Yeah, and if you can see, because of the finer serrated blade of the steak knife, that's come out a lot smoother than the coping saw. So what I'd say is if you're doing general shaping and big work, use a coping saw because it's quicker and easier. Yeah, if you're finding it up, steak knife, carving knife, got to get a new one of these. Yeah. And that's the basic cutting with general tools. Now, obviously, yeah, just let me upset the wife by scraping all that over there. And a little word of warning, little bit of advice. Never throw away this stuff. Yeah, always throw it in a carrier bag. Throw it back in with what you call it, with your reserves, with your stock. Yeah, because you you will find uses for them. You'll find them, you'll end up putting them at the bottom of bases to build up things, yeah? So never throw this stuff away, yeah? So if we're moving on to the next tools, what we're looking at is hot tools. And there's a wide selection and there's one really good set that I'll show you in a product review in the future, yeah? I've got them here, but I don't want to dig them out just yet. Yeah, so what I've got here is a Woodland Scenics Hot Wire Cutter. Yeah, and the basic idea is, yeah, is it's a handle with two metal bars, yeah, and I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's a wire on there. And what happens is electricity is passed up through here, along there, through the wire, and then back down. And as it goes through the wire, the wire heats up, yeah. And so what you're able to do is, if I, with this one, it's got a safety where you've got to hold the trigger on to get it to work. So if I hold it on, and I get my piece of polystyrene, you can see the smoke coming off it. Yeah, they, those are those fumes, so make sure you're well ventilated. Yeah, and you can just cut through it. Yeah, so just cut through it. Yeah, and you get a lovely clean cut, a really smooth clean cut. Now, a quick word when working with hot tools. The way they work, yeah, is obviously the wire heats up. As it goes through the foam, yeah, it melts the foam, but there's a heat transference. So if you go nice and slow and steady, there's a constant heat and it's a nice smooth cut. Yeah, easy peasy. Yeah, if you suddenly decide to go that you want to go really fast, what you'll notice is the wire dragging. And what's happening is, is that the heat is transferring to the foam quicker than the wire can heat up. And what you end up with is a more wavy, jaggedy line. Now, just give me a second, I'll bring that close to the camera so you can see it, yeah? Do you see how it's got like sort of wave effects? And what's happening is, it's heating up, it's cutting through, it's cooling down, it's going slower. And this produces a wave effect, which is nowhere near as smooth as the original cut we did. Yeah, so when you're working with hot wire tools, yeah, or any sort of hot tools, always make sure, yeah, that you go nice and slow and steady. You're going a hell of a lot faster than with cutting tools, and it's a better job anyway, so just don't rush it, yeah? Sometimes when you're working with hot tools, you'll get little bits of polystyrene left on the wire. And I'm not sure if you can see those white bits there. Yeah, but if you just put a bit of heat through it, what will happen is they'll mount and they'll disappear. Ah, uh, see? And it's gone. Yeah, tiny little bit left. Yeah, and that's actually melted. So let's quickly show you through the expanded polystyrene stuff. And now this will cut through it really quickly. So if I go like that, doo -doo -doo, nice and steady. It's basically because this isn't as dense. Yeah. And there you go. Yeah, nice and smooth. And obviously, if you've got a block, you can cut round it, work round it, build your hills, build your shape up, and it's really easy to work with. Yeah, so they're the, the first watch called sort of hot tools. Now, one other hot tool that I want to show you is obviously you can get a wide range of cutting hot tools, yeah? But because it's polystyrene, you can also melt it. Yeah, now what I've got here is a cheap and nasty blowgun, yeah? And this is the cheapest I could get from B&Q, and I think it cost me about 18 pound, yeah? Now what's interesting about this is, because polystyrene, yeah, melts, now can you see all the rough bubbles there? Or perhaps all the rough bubbles there, yeah? We switch the heat gun on. Oh, it's blowing the bits everywhere. 
what it'll do is it will melt the surface and it will smooth it off and you can use this to shape it let's just shape this like that yeah take this corner off yeah and obviously the further you hold it away the smoother the effect yeah if you hold it really close you get that sort of effect great for making craters to be perfectly honest on tables yeah so that's the heat gun yeah and as you've noticed if you look yeah it's suddenly become a lot smoother it's not completely smooth yeah, because the heat, heat gun's not really a, a smoothing tool. We're sort of using, we're ad hoc in with it, essentially, yeah? But you get some good effects, and it's a hell of a lot better than the bobbly look you get when you just break a bit off. Yeah, I mean, that's a bit broken off. It's all rough. You can see each individual balls, and if you paint that up, everyone's going to know what it is. But if you run a heat gun over it, all of a sudden, yeah, it's a lot smoother. Now heat gun on this sort of stuff just so you can show just so I can show you yeah is we've got a rough bit there yeah that's where it sort of snapped as I was cleaning it up so put the heat gun on yeah now remember this is denser so it's not going to melt as quick yeah but because it's denser you will get a far smoother effect yeah, now remember this stuff is hot, so don't touch it straight away because it's still in liquid state. Yeah, and that will give you a much smoother effect. Yeah, and basically because of the density. Yeah, so this stuff will melt, this stuff will melt really quick. This stuff, it'll take a little bit longer, but it'll give you a smoother effect with a heat gun. And a heat gun's really good is if you've shaped your hill, just gently waft it over and it just smooths it out a bit. Now, of course, yeah, if you want to smooth it, there's other ways of smoothing it. Yeah, and that's simple sandpaper. And all I've got here is I've got some fine sandpaper. Yeah, wrapped around a cork sanding block. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some sanding. Now, some people say that you can't really sand polystyrene because it just keeps breaking off. And that's not true. Yeah, what you can do with it is you can sand. But the trick is... Give me a second. Yeah, and if you look, that has actually sanded off. That's gone smooth. And if you've got a large piece and you're just smoothing your edges, yeah, you can work round it with this. And remember, I'm going on quite a hard angle. Normally, you'd have tapered it with your knife or your hot wire tools. Yeah, same with this side. Yeah. Now remember, this sounds a lot louder because this is melted, so there's harder bits in it. Yeah, but you can just... Yeah. And it will smooth off, yeah. Now the problem, yeah, with with sanding, yeah, with polystyrene is if you're using this stuff, which is the balls, yeah, and I'll use this side because the top side's been melted and hardened. If you sand, what you get is if you put a lot of pressure in, it breaks up. Yeah, and if you can see that, yeah, it's starting to actually come away and the balls are coming away and it doesn't look very nice. Whereas, if you just stand nice and gently, yeah, you don't rip the balls apart because what happens is if you press hard, yeah, the friction yeah adhering to the balls is too much and it will physically rip them out whereas you go nice and slow yeah and it will come out smooth so that's sanding ex expanded this is polystyrene foam yeah it can be sanded as well yeah you can be quite rough with this because it doesn't have the balls in there you have it yeah and if you can see there yeah that's nice and smooth and it really is 
Yeah, so it's perfect for... I'd actually say that sanding is better than the blowtorch for finishing this stuff, to be perfectly honest, yeah. Uh, blowtorch works really well with this sort of stuff, but then again, so does sanding. It's just going to take you a bit longer because you've got to go a bit more gentle. Okay, so that's the basics of cutting. Now, a couple of other things I want to go through quickly is I want to talk to you about a few techniques for working with multiple layers and guides and that sort of thing and i'll do that next yeah then after that we'll look at how you seal it and paint it okay so give me a second let me tie myself up and i'll come back and show you a few more advanced tips back in a second guys right guys uh that's all squared away and i've got a few more bits for you now what i've got here is i've raided one of the kids cereal boxes they're kooky crisps so they're not going to be happy and what i've done is i've bent the cardboard around a piece of polystyrene, expanded polystyrene. Yeah, and they've drawn a basic template on it. And all I did with this one is literally draw around a big mug. As you can see, that's just the base of a big mug. Yeah, and you can do all sorts of designs, but what this is is essentially, it's a guide for cutting. So if I come across here, I lay it straight and I put it on there. Yeah, what you end up with is if you hold it tight, is a guide on both sides. Yeah, and what I'm going to do, and I'm going to do it very carefully because with it being small and it's a bit tricky, is I'm going to cut this out. So push it down, get it all lined up, nice and squared away. Yeah, get my hot wire tool. Yeah, let it warm up for a second. Now just be careful when you do this because although it's going to drag on the cardboard a bit, All the way down. I'm, I'm just applying pressure against the cardboard as I do it. Oh, and I've reached the limit of the hot wire gun, so I'm just going to need to... Sorry, the hot wire cutter. I'm just going to need to bring it around. Now, that was a bit tricky, and I've got to watch my fingers. But you end up with something like that. Yeah. And there you have a cut shape. Now, this is a little bit rough and ready. Yeah, you can spend a lot more time putting together your cardboard template. I knocked that together in literally like 30 seconds just to show you and give you an example. Yeah, but obviously, any shape you can draw with cardboard, you can cut. Yeah, you can pin the cardboard to the polystyrene. You can even glue the part cardboard to the polystyrene. But just lightly tack it with PVA so it doesn't move while you cut it out. Okay, so that's using a cardboard guide. Yeah. Like I say, rough and ready for this example, that's why the piece isn't perfect yet, yeah, but you can use it to shape all sorts of things, literally. Yeah, it's down to you what you use your templates for. Now, the other thing I wanted to just quickly show you, yeah, was another advanced technique, and that's how to use multiple layers. So I'll put this to one side. I'll bring back our rough and ready that's been melted and blasted, yeah. And let's say we want to make a bigger hill than this, yeah. So we get another piece. Yeah, and what we're going to plan on doing is put one on top of the other. Yeah, to make a massive hill. Okay, and I'll use this side because, to be perfectly honest, this side's melted, filed. It's a lot cleaner this side. Now, you could hold them down while you cut it. You could glue them. But what I recommend you do is use toothpicks. Okay, and what you do is, dead simple, put your toothpicks in. Yeah, they're sharp. Careful where you put them. Don't poke yourself with them. Okay. And then you put them in. Yeah, and then you're literally just going to go push your other block right on top of it. Yeah, and that will set. Now, a lot of people recommend, what you call it, applying glue, what you call it, in between them before you actually do the shaping. I don't actually like that because I find what happens is the glue sets and then when I'm working with it, I'm cutting fine with the polystyrene, but sometimes I'm struggling to cut through the PVA and it causes problems. And where it's melted the PVA, you can see a nasty joint. So what I tend to do is I put the pieces together first. I get my hot wire tool. Yeah, and I carve through them both. In a well-ventilated area, as you can see. I don't want to melt my brain. Yeah, so I've cut through them both there. Yeah, and what you end up with is a near perfect joint. Now remember, you're gonna be sanding it afterwards. Yeah, so it isn't a problem. So what I'd do is I'd put my cocktail sticks into my shape. 
I'd get the general shape all sorted. And then what I'd do is I'd literally lift this up a bit. Yeah. And then use PVA. And I'd just get the PVA in where I needed it, use gravity to make it flow from one side and to get it in the middle, etc. Because remember, PVA will flow around if you put big blobs on. Yeah, and then once I've got it all spread round, I'd push it back down again. And that's when I'd apply a weight, yeah? And what you'll get is, you might get some coming out of the edges, in which case, damp cloth, clean it off, yeah? Rather than smoothing out. If you smooth it out with your finger, you'll leave a coating of PVA over it. And what's gonna happen is when you come to sanding, you'll get sanding polystyrene, then you'll hit the PVA, and you might get a rougher sand or a different texture. Yeah, so if you just get a damp cloth, if you get any bits coming out the side, and just wipe them away, and that will give you a damn good join, yeah, that you can't see. Okay, remember, after they've actually joined, then you can actually just quickly sand it and just smooth everything in anyway. Okay, so that's how to work with multiple layers. When it comes to the glue, yeah, I highly recommend just basic PVA. Okay, now you can, yeah, get specialist polystyrene glue with all sorts of specialist additives in, yeah. But to be perfectly honest, yeah. It may save a little bit of time, but stick with PVA. You're not gonna go wrong, yeah? If you're rich, go buy some. In fact, if you're rich, go buy me some, because I'd like loads as well. But you know, I'm on a budget, so PVA for me. So that's basically how you do multiple layers, and that's how you work with guides. The only other thing that I really want to talk about is more professional tools and then sealing. Now, one of the things you can get, and I've got, and I'll quickly show it to you. It isn't set up yet. sorry about this, is one of these. Yeah, and this is a scroll table. Yeah, and basically what it does is it sits on, yeah, you would adjust your, your armature, you run a hot wire from there and there, you plug it in, yeah, and then basically all you're gonna do is, you're gonna get your polystyrene, and you can literally follow a template, and that will give you an exact cut, okay? Dead easy. Yeah, so that's the hot wire scroll table. These are gonna set you back about 50, 60 quid. So you only need to get one of these if you're seriously building terrain. Yeah, like I am. Otherwise, stick with your steak knives. And if you really wanna go posh, get a hot wire cut from one of the various manufacturers. Now, let me just bring the camera back up so you can see me. Oh, right. Finally, finishing this stuff. I've shown you how to shape it, I've shown you how to cut it, how to sand it, how to glue it, how to use guides. The final thing is getting it prepped for war games terrain. Now, if you go online, a lot of people say you can paint it straight away and you can use like latex paint and all sorts. You can even use kiddies paint to paint it. But I tend to find that if you do that for war games terrain, then what's gonna happen is it doesn't really give it a protective coating. After a couple of bashes, bits are gonna break off, yeah, and it's gonna look a nightmare, yeah, because you'll have this wonderful hill that you've flocked, you've painted, you may look great, yeah, with a walking great white chunk cave in it, yeah, where bits are broken off. So my recommendation is always, after you've built your scenery, yeah, and you've, set, you've got the shape and everything, and before you get ready to actually texture it and paint it, is seal it. Now, there's two main ways of sealing it. Well, there's three, okay? First off, yeah, you can use Plaster of Paris. Yeah, and that will give you a nice rocky effect. The problem with Plaster of Paris is because expanded foam can move, the Plaster of Paris can crack and it'll leave white bits, yeah? And it isn't really good for war games terrains because it will chip. Yeah, you want something a lot more durable. And in that case, yeah, you're looking at PVA. Yeah, now PVA, if you give this stuff a, a coat of PVA, yeah, it will harden, it will not damage, yeah? You can also make papier mache, which is just pa paper dipped in water down PVA and layered on, and that will give it a really strong structure, yeah? What I tend to do, yeah, is I'll mix PVA with a bit of gravel, yeah, very fine gravel, and I'll give it a coat with that, yeah? And then as it's drying, I'll pour more fine grit over it. And what you end up with is a PVA layer that's textured, and you're ready to go. I mean, you can even add your little rocks and your little outcrops, yeah, when you're doing your, your sort of hills, before, you know, literally into the PVA grit, and then just decorate around it, and then just let it set. And then you're only looking at painting and flocking it. Yeah, so that's my advice on painting and sealing, yeah. Personally, 
mixture of PVA and grit, you'll go absolutely fine. Yeah, just be aware that PVA when it dries, it does tend to warp a bit. So, you know, just be aware of that. Spread it out. Don't use too much. Yeah, or, you know, it can warp polystyrene a little, especially if you're working with long, thin pieces. When they're small, flat pieces, it's not really a problem, to be perfectly honest. So, guys, that's polystyrene. We've gone through everything from the safety. We've gone through what it is. We've covered how to cut it, how to work with it. I hope you really have found this useful to you. If you've got any tips or you think I've missed anything, add them in the comments. If you've got any questions, throw them in the comments. Yeah, I'm available on Twitter. It's The Terrain Tutor. Uh, I'm available on Facebook. It's the, the Terrain Tutor. I've got my own website, www.theterraintutor.co.uk. And if you're on the web, there's going to be annotations appearing on the screen. Yes. Yeah, just click one of those to see the sort of stuff or just subscribe to my watch it youtube channel for more videos i really appreciate it. if you do like it guys give me a like eh? it just lets me know that i'm sort of on the right track and it lets other people know it's worth watching yeah if you didn't like it why what did i do wrong let me know in the comments yeah right until next time have a good day guys have fun with polystyrene and remember just to play with this stuff all you need is a bit of packaging and a steak knife and a little bit of sandpaper. So don't be scared to get stuck in, give it a go. Just make sure you clean up afterwards. And remember, if you're gonna be using knives, cut carefully. If you're gonna be using hot tools, use a ventilated area. And don't forget that dust mask when you're sanding. Have a good day, guys. Yeah, and I'll catch you in the next video. Ta-da.